Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and welcome to the channel. A slight deviation from the usual, just to cover this extremely unusual game between Aronian and Geary. We are now in round four of the competition in sunny Mallorca and I'm going to cover something I never covered before. Levon White kicked off with the Reti. And after a copycat of this move, Levon went for c4. After g6, the main idea of this move is to get the bishop out. And now with this knight coming out, Geary went for d5, opening up this game before it was even getting started. Levon took here, and of course, Geary recaptured. The usual response to this move is to attack the knight, because after this knight's come off, white builds a very strong center, and all he's waiting for is to bring up d4 and bobs your uncle. Levon came up with something else, d3. And now with the bishop coming out, Aronian covered up. After castles and g3, again, the idea is to get the bishop out and also go for a kingside castle. Giri here came up with c5 just to stop d4. The usual move for white is to get the bishop out. But again, Aronian went for something completely new. He pushed on with h4. And when Giri developed his other knight, h4 was no longer h4 because Aronian pushed him to h5. And his aim was very clear. After the knights came off, Giri pushed on with c4. Take him or leave him. Only take his please in two, one, and pause. If you do, expect this bishop to come out to g4. And even if h takes, when h recaptures, you still have bishop g2 to be able to deal with this threat on the knight. In either case, black has a very equal game. So coming back, before Aronian got on to deal with this business on c4, he removed this soldier here, and only when Geary recaptured, always from outside in. But if you ask what I would do, I would have gone taking g6 this way round. And here Aronian got his queen involved by attacking c4. Geary came up with this knight move to a5, and though I'm sure there are better moves he could have gone for, by either getting his queen out to d5, or the bishop to e6, or even removing this soldier. This game would have been on fire, but how does white ensure this fire is real? Queen h4 is the answer, and black would need to drop any plans he has, because once there is a mate threat on the board, this always takes priority. In this position, black only has this move, f6 and after this the game is still very sharp. Aronian stops c4 but by pushing ahead with his subsequent move not only the knight is covered by Giri but Giri also prepares his bishop to come out and what a game this turns out to be. After bishop g2 and bishop b7 the queen returned to c2. Here Giri came up with a queen move to d5 because he wanted this bishops off the board. He did see this very likely knight move to h4, and this is exactly what Levon meant for, a move that pushed the queen back. But even here, the bishops remain on the board, because Aronian pushed on with e4, holding a good control of the centre. After e5, there was no need to capture anything, and Levon just pushed on with this d5 initiative, and just look at what this does. This bishop is rendered completely useless and the knight here on a5 is written off because if the bishop on b7 has a way to relocate himself, this knight is completely paralyzed. And to bring back to life this knight, Giri moved out this bishop from b7, but how good a move was this? And how strong was his first move when he placed the bishop on the diagonal in the first place? And here, there is basically only one move, f4. 
just to break open the position and it doesn't matter if you take or not. Now there are blunders which are very obvious and there are positional blunders where you only begin to see things going south in two or three moves after a player has committed to this move. And this is how Geary initiates his first positional blunder because he repositioned his queen to e7. And this is what happened after the queen got in on e7. Are there any daring takers here before we move on in two, one and pause? f5 and this is why take f5 and you will get the bishop in on h3 and even if you do take e4 once the bishops come off just go for this knight move to f5 going after the queen and bishop and after the queen comes out of this threat there is only one move you're really looking for short castles and only when this king gets rolling, once you get this knight out to this square, this is definitely one of the knights who is not grim on the rim. Queen d6 is going to get black crushed, however you choose to respond. Taking on e4 for example is job done, because against nearly every single response, once this queen comes in on this location, Taking d5 is going to run into bishop g5 and black falls apart. f6 is one example of how things can move on. But after a check on g6, once you get this king to where? And I'm not sure what is better for white. Certainly king e8 looks better, but let's just prove why king f7 is no better than e8. King f7 is going to run into a very venomous check and only when the king is forced to this square after all. The queen can go on to have this bishop removed and from here you don't even need me to continue. I hope you can see what is going on and how you can finish off with three or four moves that remain. For this obvious reason, Geary did not take but what he did do is to attack this knight. And where on earth is this knight going to go? Basically, there is only a single location you can put him on. But even here, Aronian came up with something else. Mind you, do you see d5? An excellent move is to push on to attack the queen, a move Aronian may not even have considered. If you take d6, you can now remove g5 and it's again job done. I'm not going to go into this in any depth, but by all means feel free to experiment. So after g5, any ideas on how Ronian moved on? He went for queen d1 and now when this knight was arrested, this had been another geary blunder in fact. And why? Because when the rook recaptured, Black has no way of stopping this queen from coming into this so important and vital h5. And once you allow this to happen, well, I need say no more. Giri went for the only move that saves him for the time being, rook d8, just to make the necessary room for the king to make a run. We know what the main move in this position is going to be, but did Aronian find it? Yep. He had no problems locating this queen to h5 move. But if we move this queen back to d1, is there possibly a better move than this? Maybe getting this queen in on g4 would have been stronger. But let's continue with what Aronian chose to go for. Forcing now Geary to go for a king move and one he did go for. And it was Aronian's turn to blunder here big time. He went for rook g4. And by committing to such a move, he stops himself from being able to attack black. If queen d6 is found, for example, the game is back to square one and white would need to come up with some extraordinary moves just to be able to win. There are a few ways to do so, but I will skip, but always, if you're looking for that bit of extra, 
thank goodness we have the common section. But rather than getting the queen in place, Giri blunders again by getting in his bishop onto f6. And what he did with this move, he allowed Levon to come in with a bishop check. And though Giri had seen all this, he was with the false impression that the king could still escape. He moved him back to this original starting position. And after Levon followed up with a rook check, the king moved out to d7. And this is where you come in to finish off. Is there a move to determine the outcome of this game? And if so, what are we looking for? Any takers before we find the stop button in two, one, and pause. D6, and this was also the very last move in the game because Geary gave up. And why? If you take with the queen, you will get pinned by this rook on d1. And if you take with the king, you will get checked by the rook on d1 again. And now after the king is forced back to c7, the rook can move in to take the black rook. And this was the reason for Geary to have resigned. Simply because it was too painful to even wait and see what was coming his way. I said I had not covered a game like this before because we did not see one or two blunders, but five blunders in total. In what? Six moves. Two from Levon and four, even five, if we stretch it from Geary, who was surprisingly caught out by Levon's trap. And how did he manage to allow this to happen? No one would ever know. Okay, there is so much more to come because of the T-Sex Superfinals are about to get started. So I will see you very shortly. Until next time, this was your Chess Puzzler.